so far we have learnt about effect of magnetic field on a moving charge or a current carrying conductor we have learned that if there is a magnetic field then if there is a moving charge in the region where there is a magnetic field the moving charge experiences a force or if there is a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field the current carrying conductor experiences a force and we also know from knowledge of electrostatics that if there is a charged particle if, if it is kept or placed in an electric field it experiences a force so the force experienced by charged particle is f equal to qe plus q v cross b if only electric field is there the force is due to the electric field only is q times e if there is only magnetic field is q v cross b and we have understood that if the charged particle is at static condition it is not moving then v is zero and there will be no force on the charged particle due to the magnetic field okay but a static charged particle experiences a electric field qv okay so these are the guiding equations so if only magnetic field is there fm fm that means force due to the magnetic field on a moving charge is q v cross b we know si unit of force is newton charge is coulomb velocity is meter per second and b is tesla sometimes you have to play with the units so this tesla can be expressed as also force divided by charge into velocity that means force force unit is newton in si by charge into velocity is charge into velocity means charge into distance by time so charge by time is ampere and velocity is meter so newton per ampere meter tesla can be expressed like that also and if a moving charge velocity of the moving charge is in the direction perpendicular to the direction of magnetic field that means just see, consider the situation q force is equal to force is equal to q v cross b if a moving charge is experiences a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of velocity this is v and this is b if a moving charge experiences a magnetic field in a region uniform magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of motion then it experiences a force in the direction perpendicular to both v and b and if one newton of force is experienced by a one coulomb charge having velocity 1 meter per second then and if velocity and v are perpendicular to each other then we say that the magnetic field present over there is 1 tesla okay so 1 newton of 1 newton 1 tesla of magnetic field produces 1 newton of force or a 1 coulomb charge experiences 1 newton of force while moving with a velocity 1 meter per second in a direction perpendicular to 
a magnetic field whose strength is 1 tesla. So in that manner you can define the magnetic field also. Okay, and Tesla's unit can be Newton per ampere meter. And another thing we have learned is that if a conductor, current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, then it experiences a force, a current element I L, if it is placed in a magnetic field B, then it experiences a force F is equal to this much. We have learned this in a previous slide like this here force is actually I L cross B and again one Tesla B unit of B can be derived as force per ampere force in Newton meter because B is F by I L and here also if a current carrying conductor element L is placed in a magnetic field which is perpendicular to the direction of current flow then the force will be is since L and B are perpendicular to each other the magnitude of the force will be I L B and that means we can say that a current carrying conductor of length 1 meter carrying a current 1 ampere experiences a force 1 newton when placed in a magnetic field 1 tesla which is in a direction perpendicular to the direction of current flow like this. So B1 tesla length 1 meter current 1 ampere produces a force of 1 newton and the condition is that conductor current direction of current and magnetic field they are perpendicular to each other. So 1 ampere current flowing through a conductor of length 1 meter placed in a magnetic field of 1 tesla and magnetic field and current they are orthogonal to each other they are, their directions are perpendicular to each other this is I and this is B experiences a force 1 newton in a direction perpendicular to both L vector and B vector. So all these things that means what is the force on a what is the force experienced by a moving charge or a current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field that we have understood we have learned previously okay now we are going for some other things moving charges it was discovered it was understood it was found out experimentally that moving charges produces moving charges produce magnetic field in the surrounding region that means if there is a charge if you keep a charge somewhere we all know that if there is a charge q somewhere if there is a charge q at some point then if it is static it produces electric field in a region surrounding the charge and the field extends up to infinity as per our understanding as per coulomb's law but if the charge starts moving if the charge moves then what happens it produces a magnetic field also it produces a magnetic field also okay and how it is sensed if there is a moving charge and if this is a moving charge this, this is a moving charge it is moving along this direction and this direction is z direction consider x y z coordinate system the charge is moving along z direction and if you bring a magnetic needle nearby you will observe that there is a deflection of magnetic needle because of the motion of the 
moving charge. If you stop the motion of the moving charge, then there will be no further deflection. Magnetic needle will be fixed. But as soon as the charge starts moving, the magnetic needle actually deflects. And at the various points in space surrounding the point, point charge, you will find that the direction of forces or deflection are different. Okay. So, with this observation, a simple experiment, we can find, we can understand that a moving charge produces a magnetic field surrounding the area, surrounding its presence, point of presence. Okay. Now, if this is the situation, if move, charge is moving along z direction, then what is the amount of magnetic field produced in the surrounding region? And this is given by empirical formula, biot savart law, empirical law. This is biot savart law. It was based on experimental observations. Okay. And this force uh, and this uh, field, magnetic field, when the charge is moving, along z direction in the surrounding area magnetic field is produced a magnetic field is sensed by a magnetic needle that we was discussing and the expression of magnetic field v is given by mu naught by 4 pi q v cross r cap by r square is mu naught is called free space permeability and its value is 4 pi to 10 to the power minus 7 tesla meter per ampere. This is a universal parameter you can say it is a free space permeability like epsilon naught we are learned in the electrostatics here mu naught is the free space permeability. Q is the charge of the particle moving charge V is the velocity vector of the charge and R is the instantaneous radius vector of the point under consideration measured from the position of the moving charge. Okay. Instantaneous velocity of the charge particle is V equal to Vz cap. It is moving along this direction. Posi position vector of the point under consideration. Point under consideration is the point at which I am interested to know about the value of magnetic field vector okay position vector of the point under consideration from the instantaneous position of the point charge is r okay so these are the quantities this thing sometimes you can write like this q v cross instead of unit vector let me write r vector then in the denominator it becomes r cube because R cap we can write R by mod of R unit vector along radius vector. So it is R cap by R by vector R by R. So both the notations we use. So here it is R square, here it is R cube. If it is R cube, you have to instead of unit vector, you have to write R vector. Okay. Now let us consider a situation depicted in the diagram a moving charge there is a moving charge at any point of time it is at this position say now surrounding this point imagine a imaginary sphere a sphere spherical surface on the equator take two representative points e1 and e2 and p1 p2 are the two polar points on the sphere imaginary sphere now what is the magnetic field at the point b at the point e1 b e1 using this bio savart law let us try to find out we are using always the vector notations and vector algebra if you use then you quickly arrive at the complete definition or complete quantification of the magnetic field is actually q mu naught by 4 pi v is actually v z cap so v z cap this is z cap v z cap 
cross R cap. R cap for this U1 point, this is the R vector from the instantaneous position of the charge, draw a vector from this point to the point under consideration U1. So this is R vector and R vector has a magnitude, has a unit vector in the y direction because this is y axis, y direction by R square. Okay, so U1 point is at a distance R from the position, instantaneous position of the charge which is, which is at this point. So actually Q mu naught by 4 pi V by R square Z cap cross Y cap, Z cap cross Y cap is actually negative of X cap. Okay, so minus Q V mu naught by 4 pi R square, this is 4, 4 pi R square X cap. So V U1 is minus mu naught V Q by 4 pi R square X cap. That means X is, X axis is in this direction perpendicular to the plane of the board coming out of the board and negative of X cap is a vector in a direction perpendicular to the board of the plane of the board and going inside the board. Okay. So we give a sign like this cross. Cross means at this point if I put a cross that means it is a vector pointing into the plane of the board. So the the magnetic field at this point u1 has a magnitude q v mu naught by 4 pi r square all these parameters are known to us gives the charge of the moving particle v is the velocity of the moving particle which is in the direction of z axis positive z axis mu naught is the free space permeability r is the distance of u1 from the instantaneous position of the moving charge and x cap is the unit vector along positive x direction and since it is negative so it is in the negative x direction and we have obtained v, v u1 is like this so this formula we have established okay now what is v e2 v e2 magnetic field at the point e2 produced at the time by the moving charge okay now here again it is q mu naught by 4 pi application of Bach's Sohart law v z cap because v cross r v is v z cap cross here position vector is this unit vector along this direction is in this direction this is the position vector and unit vector along this direction is definitely negative of y cap divided by r square okay so it is z z cap cross negative of y cap so it is what q mu naught v by 4 pi r square and z cap cross y cap is negative of x cap and there is another negative sign so it becomes x cap so v e2 becomes mu naught q v by 4 pi r square x cap so at this point e2 the field magnitude will be same as that at u1 but the direction will be direction will be in the positive x direction that means it will come out of the plane of the board in this direction okay so here the magnetic field at u1 is into the plane of the board and here the magnetic field at e2 is coming out of the plane of the board perpendicular to the plane of the board and both the magnitudes b2 and b1 are same magnitude of b2 is equal to magnitude of B E U1. Okay. Now what is the field, magnetic field produced by the moving charge at the point P1? B P1. See here 
here the v vector at the point uh, position vector r is in this direction which is in the z direction only unit vector so v cross r will give you zero because both v and r are in the same direction angle between v vector and r vector is zero and therefore cross product is zero so v b p1 is zero and b p2 is also zero because in this case the position vector is in this direction which is negative z axis and <coughs> v is in the positive z axis so angle between v vector and r vector or r cap vector is 180 degree and they are anti parallel you can say opposite direction and therefore the angle between them is 180 degree and therefore their cross product is also zero so this all these four expressions we could establish using Biot-Savart law and you see at least these four representative points we have found that at the polar points if you draw imaginary sphere centering this point instantaneous position of the point charge then at the poles p1 and p2 the magnetic field produced is zero whereas in the points on the equator the magnitude of the force uh, field, magnetic field produced is mu naught q v by 4 pi r square and its directions are different at different points at u1 it is into the plane of the board and at e2 it is out of the plane of the board and for any arbitrary point you can calculate using this vector notation okay so on the surface of an imaginary sphere centered around the instantaneous position of the moving charge the magnetic field produced by the moving charge is maximum at equator where r and v are perpendicular vectors r and v are perpendicular vectors and zero at the poles where r and v are parallel or anti-parallel vectors parallel or anti-parallel vectors okay so I think this part is clear okay so we have learned that a moving charge produces a magnetic field surrounding it and to calculate that magnetic field we have to use this formula where v is the velocity of the charge instantaneous velocity of the charge and r is the position vector of the point under consideration where you are interested to find the magnetic field with respect to the instantaneous position of the charge so this is the formula and how the formula can be used that you have illustrated with such examples calculation of computation of magnetic fields at u1 p1 e2 p2 okay i think this point is clear now let us move further now what is the magnetic field the moving charge actually constitutes a current that means if the charge moves then a magnetic field is produced and it is given by empirical formula what we have learned so far okay now using the same formula you know that when there is a current flow in a conductor that means there is a movement of charge movement of electrons in the opposite direction okay now or movement of electrons in this direction constitutes a current in this direction and definitely since moving charges produce magnetic field so you can safely assume that moving charges means car electric current to a conductor also will produce magnetic field surrounding the conducting wire or surrounding the current carrying conductor now what is that magnetic field that you have to find out using the bayard sohart law what we learned in the last slide you can establish that the expression for magnetic field will be given by db is equal to mu naught i by 4 pi dl cross r cap by r square okay 
this is very important very useful formula okay so dl is the current element ideal is the current element and if there is a ideal current element then in the surrounding the current element in the region there will be a magnetic field and the expression of that is this this can be easily derived using the Bayer-Savart law that means it is nothing but current is nothing but movement of flow of charges and since a moving charge produces a magnetic field therefore a current flow also will produce a magnetic field okay now consider there is a wire like this and where is this is a coordinate axis x y z where is in the y direction current is flowing in y direction current is flowing in the y direction and this current flow is i this is i now this is the current flow direction at consider a small current element ideal this is small element elemental length dl along the direction of current flow this is a state conductor we are assuming okay now with this here this r is actually like original bayard savart law here also r is actually this dl is very small length element infinite small length element and p is a point under consideration and its polar coordinate with respect to this current element is r theta that means this radius vector is r and this angle is theta okay this angle is theta okay and dl dl cross r dl this is the r vector this is the dl vector so we can write mu 0 i by 4 pi dl cross r by r square so it is mu 0 i dl by 4 pi dl angle between dl vector and r vector is theta so mu 0 i by 4 pi dl sin theta by r square and in this case in this case what is the direction of the magnetic field see this is the r vector this is r vector so dl cross r dl is this direction r is this direction so dl cross r is a vector pointing into the board white board into the board so it is negative it is actually dl cross r will be in the direction of x axis basically okay this is dl cross r so dl cross r this is dl this is r so it is in the direction of x axis it is in this direction x axis okay okay so dl cross r so if you right handed screw if you just take the screw comes out of the board and that that's why it is in the positive x direction okay so i can write the vector as dv at this point is magnetic field produced at this point is mu naught i dl sin theta by r square 4 pi also is there x cap because dl cross r clearly see the formula it is dl cross r it is not r cross dl it is dl cross r cap had i written this thing instead of r cap if i write r then db becomes earlier also you have explained you can write mu 0 i by 4 pi dl cross r by r q so compute the cross product dl cross r dl is in direction r is in direction so dl cross r so it is coming out the screw is coming out so it is in the x direction okay now this is the expression for magnetic field and when you say magnetic field that means it has a magnitude as well as direction and man direction is actually perpendicular to both the current vector current element vector which is in y direction and plane containing the current element and p 
so it is obviously in the direction perpendicular to the plane of the board but there could be two directions but two perpendiculars on the board one could be inside the looking inside going inside the board another is going outside coming outside the board in this case by vector cross product convention the vector is coming out of the board okay that you have to take care but definitely it is perpendicular to the plane containing p and the wire okay now so this is bart's our law when we are applying this to case of current carrying conductor this is a current carrying conductor in the surrounding of the conductor at any point magnetic field will be produced this expression will be like this or like this okay now if the wire is of infinite length from n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity you take a take an origin of the coordinate system at o o is what this is the current carrying conductor we are supposed to calculate the magnetic field produced by the current carrying conductor at the point p so you drop a perpendicular from p on this wire so call it o and your coordinate axis you choose this as y axis this direction as z direction and this direction as x direction so x y z okay now r theta is the polar coordinate of this point with respect to this infinitesimal length element dl okay now magnitude of we have already found that the direction of magnetic field will be unit vector along the direction of magnetic field is x cap okay now and it is for all points all current elements now db is if you write db is actually db magnitude of this current element magnitude of this magnetic field is mu not i by 4 pi r square dl cross r cap so dl sin theta angle between dl and r cap r vector is actually r r cap so this angle is theta so this is sin theta okay mu not i dl sin theta by 4 pi r square okay <coughs> now r square is what this is r magnitude so r square is definitely d square plus l square so mu not i dl and so and sin theta is what sin theta so first of all this is theta so let us calculate sin pi minus theta pi minus theta this is theta so this angle is pi minus theta so sin pi minus theta is actually sin pi minus theta is sin theta which is nothing but because you know the sin pi minus theta is sin theta i i think you have no doubt so if this is theta so sin theta is equal to sin pi minus theta so sin pi minus theta is sin theta so sin theta is d by from this geometry perpendicular by hypotenuse root over d square plus l square so i can write db equal to mu naught by 4 pi i dl into sin theta is d by d square plus l square this is dl d square plus l square sin theta is d by d square plus l square and there is another d so okay let me write d by square root of d square plus l square mm. 
this is sin theta okay and r square is actually d square plus l square so mu naught i by 4 pi dl sin theta is d by d square plus l square whole to the power half and r square is d square plus l square so magnetic field db magnitude of the magnetic field i can write is mu naught i by 4 pi d dl divided by d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2 okay so mu naught by 4 pi d dl by d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2 so this much is clear okay where l is what this is l this is l the coordinate of this point is actually l0 you can say this is y axis this is y direction so i can write following the convention 0 l 0 and after that we consider the elementary length dl and dl with respect to dl the polar coordinate of this point is r theta and therefore this formula reduces to this much mu naught i dl sin theta by 4 pi r square and this r is actually this is l this is d perpendicular distance of the point from the where is d and this is l so d square plus l square is r square so we have arrived at this expression okay now once we get this expression then what is the magnetic field produced by the infinitely long conducting wire that means l value is extending from minus infinity to plus infinity this is origin l is negative infinity and it is positive infinity and actually we should not put double arrow this double arrow is indicating that the wire is extending on both sides of y axis and actually this is like this and the current i is flowing through the conductor uniform current okay because it is a state where okay so the magnetic field b and everywhere every current element dl produces a magnetic field like this and direction is always in the x cap direction because dl cross r dl cross r is always in the x cap direction unit vector of dl cross r dl cross r cap is the direction of magnetic field and unit vector along this direction is actually dl cross r divided by magnitude of dl cross r cap and it is always in this x cap direction so b db actually we can write db vector is actually x cap mu naught i by 4 pi d dl by d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2 now total magnetic field b due to the presence of current carrying conductor which is extended from y equal to negative infinity to y equal to positive infinity y equal to negative infinity to y equal to positive infinity y or l l also you can say it is the variable is actually integration x cap mu naught i by 4 pi l equal to negative infinity to positive infinity this quantity d not small d it is capital d d dl divided by d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2 
So, this is the expression for total magnetic field and the direction is in the x cap direction. Okay. Now, what is this expression? Now, say for example, you write this thing. This angle, though it is pi minus theta, but let us call it phi. So, okay. So, A L equal to D tan phi, assume A L equal to D tan phi. D, sorry, A L equal to D cot phi, cot phi, let us take. Okay, L equal to D cot phi or D by L equal to tan phi, you can say. So, D L equal to D cosec square phi D phi with a negative sign. Okay. So, this integral We have taken a substitution d equal to l equal to d cot phi, l equal to d by l equal to tan phi, you can say. So, d l equal to negative of d cos x square phi d phi. Okay. So, therefore, this integral, this integral. minus infinity to plus infinity d dl by d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2 is what dl so it is basically negative minus infinity to plus infinity d square cos x square phi d phi divided by d square plus l square is d square 1 plus cot square phi, 1 plus cot square phi is uh, sec square phi. So, it is basically uh, uh, cosec square phi because l square plus d square is in the denominator it is l square plus d square is basically d square 1 plus cot square phi. Okay. So, 1 plus cot square phi means d square 1 by sin square phi. So, it is d square cos x square phi. Okay. So, L square plus d square is d square cos x square phi and since it is d square plus L square whole to the power 3 by 2. So, it is d cube cos x cube phi d phi is already there. Okay. Now, this change of variable you have taken place, uh, we have substituted L equal to d cot phi. So, what is the change in limit? Just conventional integration you see L phi. When L is you can say tan phi is actually tan phi is actually d by l tan phi is d by l when l is infinity when l is negative infinity when l is negative infinity what is happening tan phi is zero okay so, it is 0 to negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, let us uh, not substitute like this. Okay, uh, we avoid this calculation here. It creates a confusion. Let us take this angle, uh, not like this. Substitution, let us do in a different manner. It creates confusion. 
So our integration, we are interested to find this integral minus infinity to plus infinity d dl by d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2. Let l equal to, let l equal to d tan phi that will be easier ok so l by d is tan phi that will take this angle phi ok so dl is actually t sec square phi d phi earlier substitution also you could do but it creates confusion you better assume this l equal to d tan phi where phi is this angle ok now when l phi how the variable changes when l is negative infinity tan phi is also negative infinity so phi is actually negative pi by 2 and when it is positive infinity tan phi l is positive infinity means tan phi is also positive infinity and then phi is becoming pi by 2 okay so this integral this integral becomes this integral becomes what i this integral if i call it i if i call it i then i becomes i becomes negative pi by 2 2 positive pi by 2 integral negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 d dl d dl is d sec square phi d phi so it is d square sec square phi d phi divided by d square plus l square d square plus l square is what d square plus l square is l equal to d tan phi so it is d square plus d square tan square phi so it is basically d square sec square phi 1 plus tan square phi sec square phi so it is so it is d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2 so it is basically d cube sec cube phi okay so it is what it is basically negative pi by 2 2 positive pi by 2 1 by d cos phi d phi because there is a sec phi in the denominator it becomes cos phi so what is happening this integral is actually what this integral is 1 by d cos phi when it is integrated then it gives sin phi negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 sin pi by 2 is 1 and sin negative pi by 2 is negative 1 ok you recall sin curve this is 1 and this is negative 1 this is pi by 2 and this is negative pi by 2 so it is 1 minus 1 minus negative 1 so it is 2 so it becomes 2 by d ok so 2 by d means so this integral so b becomes x cap mu naught i by 4 pi this integral this is integral negative infinity to positive infinity d dl by d square plus l square whole to the power 3 by 2 this integral is actually d by 2 by d so it is 2 by d so it is x cap mu naught i by 2 pi d okay so 
what we did this is the magnetic field b produced at the point p because of the current carrying conductor which is infinitely long from negative infinity to positive infinity y equal to negative infinity to y equal to positive infinity or l equal to negative infinity to l equal to positive infinity and the magnitude of this field is actually mu naught i by 2 pi d and it is directed along x direction x direction is actually in this direction coming out of the plane of the board okay and for that what we did we applied bart's of law for calculating the magnetic field at p we considered elementary length dl current element i dl and found the expression for magnitude of the field like this then you integrated l equal to negative infinity to positive infinity and while integrating we use this substitution technique l equal to d tan phi l equal this is l equal to d tan phi l by d equal to tan phi you can say tan phi is this angle and it is result is like this okay okay so this is the expression of magnetic field the magnetic field lines of infinitely current carrying conductor form concentric circles whose direction is indicated by the right hand rule so let we will understand the right hand rule so we have found this expression this is the expression for magnetic field produced by a infinitely long current carrying conductor carrying current i okay and actually if it is the current carrying conductor at any point p the magnetic field this is i current carrying conductor and the magnetic field at this point actually can be found out by this thing integration for this element this element this is dl dl vector and this is formula is dl cross r so r vector is this vector this is r vector so dl cross r dl cross r vector in this case in this diagram dl cross r vector is into the plane of the board okay using vector cross product convention you can find any point on it the direction of magnetic field now you see if the point is at a distance d from the square of the current carrying wire then at all distances d that surrounding this conducting wire consider imaginary circle which is at a distance d whose diameter is d then at all points on the circle the value of the magnetic field will be constant because mu naught i by 2 pi d is the strength of the magnetic field but the directions are different and at different there are many points infinite number of points on this circle and at each point you what is the direction of magnetic field and you see the direction of magnetic field will be like this the magnetic field lines of infinitely long current carrying wire from four concentric circles so for this circle at all points the magnetic field strength will be uniform you consider another circle on all points on this circle the field strength magnetic field strength will be same and the direction of magnetic field you can using convention of cross product rule you can find the direction but there is a easy rule if this is the current carrying conductor and if your right hand if you hold like this if thumb indicates the direction of magnetic field that at any point the direction at which the angles the uh, fingers of your right hand they are curling that that indicates the direction of magnetic field so if this is the current carrying conductor so at this point the field direction will be like this at this point the field direction will be like this at this point the field direction will be like this at this point the field direction will be like this that means the field direction will be tangential to the circle concentric circle and the direction will be 
found out by this right hand rule okay from vector convention also you can find out okay so in this case you see this is the current carrying conductor this is the current carrying conductor thumb indicates the direction of current flow and at the point p the fingers are curling out of the plane of the board and therefore it is in the x cap direction so one thing is very clear that if this is a current carrying conductor at this point the magnetic field will be in the direction perpendicular to the plane of the board because p is the point under consideration and any small element dl if you consider this is dl so this is the r vector and this is the dl vector so dl cross r is a vector pointing into the plane of the board and the same thing is obtained using thumb rule that means if it is direction of current flow then at the point p the fingers are curling inside the plane of the board that that's why the field at p will be into the plane of the board by this symbol i am representing that a field is perpendicular to the plane of the board and going into the plane of the board so once again if if this is the current then take two points this is at a distance d in the left hand side and p is at a distance d and q is again at the same distance d from this point it's called this point o drop a perpendicular p perpendicular from p on the current carrying conductor q is the perpendicular and at this point at the point p the field will be into the plane of the board okay and it comes from convention also bart's award law because dl is in this direction and r is in this direction say small element if you consider so dl cross r points in, into the plane of the board and from thumb rule also it is inside the plane of the board okay so at this point at this point p the field will be into the plane of the board okay and q q you see dl direction is in this direction and r direction r is always measured from the current element okay so r so dl cross r vector so dl cross r vector is coming out of the plane of the board so it is coming out of the plane of the board in this direction so here the magnetic field is inside going pointing inside the plane of the board here the magnetic field is pointing outside the plane of the board and this is also depicted in this diagram okay this side it is pointing inside the plane of the board and this side it is pointing out of the plane of the board and on a circle centering this current carrying conductor all points on the same circle the field strength will be same but the direction will be continuously changing okay and the direction of magnetic field is actually tangential to the magnetic this circle and direction is decided by the left hand rule thumb rule okay so the magnetic field lines of infinitely long current carrying wire form concentric circles whose direction is indicated by right hand rule if thumb points in the direction of the current fingers curled in the direction of the field and the field magnitude is uniform at all points on the concentric circle okay now some just one second this bauer savart law you can write if this is a current carrying conductor l and if there is a magnetic field b 
in some directions then sorry not magnetic field I'm wrong if if there is a current carrying conductor if there is a current carrying conductor I having length state conductors say L then because of this length element L at any point P the length element length is actually you assume that is the infinite is a infinitesimal length element okay so length so that the position vector r of the point p with respect to all points in the length element can be assumed to be same okay so it is better to write db notation db is equal to mu naught by 4 pi i dl cross r by r cube okay so this is a current element dl conducting a current i and at any point p whose position vector with respect to this point is actually r then the magnetic field can be given by this thing db equal to mu naught i by 4 pi dl cross r by r cube and magnetic field db can be thought of as n cap db this is the magnitude of the magnetic field and n cap is the unit vector along this direction so n cap is actually n cap is actually dl cross r divided by dl cross r magnitude okay this can also be written as dl cross r cap divided by mod dl cross r cap okay so l is a small current element magnetic field produced because of this current element at any point whose position vector is r with respect to the current element is v equal to mu naught by 4 pi l cross r cap by r square and this vector can also be written as v equal to v n cap and the n cap is actually unit vector along v and this can be easily calculated as this thing n cap is l cross r because this is the part which contributes to the direction of the magnetic field and these vectors unit vector along this direction is actually l cross r cap by mod l cross r cap i think this concept is clear sometimes it is useful and sometimes we write this formula also that means dl cross r by r cube because r by r is actually r cap okay so this is also sometimes written okay so n is the unit vector along the magnetic field so what is the magnitude of the magnetic field that this is mu by four, mu naught by 4 pi i dl sin theta by r square where d sin theta we have already defined the dl vector and r vector what is the angle between dl vector and r vector and unit vector along the direction of magnetic field at that point can be calculated like this unit vector is like this okay so this concept is sometimes important while handling some problems okay of complicated geometry okay now this is once again magnetic field db is mu naught r by 4 pi dl cross r by r square and this is the current direction this is the current direction thumb is indicating the current direction at any point magnetic field so this is the current direction and at, at this point you see the fingers are curling into the plane of the board that's why at this point it is into the plane of the board and here it is coming out of the fingers are curling out in the towards me 
if I point the thumb in this direction at, at this point, at this type, these points actually in the left hand side points, the field vectors are coming out of the, in this direction, coming out of the plane of the board. And here it is going inside the plane of the board. And if it is like this, you just hold your thumb like this. And at this point, these points actually, it is going inside the plane of the board. And and here, if you, in this case, at these points, it is coming out of the plane of the board. Okay. Here it is like this. So, easily you can find out the direction of magnetic field. And what is the magnitude of this thing, magnetic field, that you have to take the angle between dl and r and sin theta mu i by 4 pi dl sin theta by r square that is the magnitude of the magnetic field. So for this actually you need a thorough reading of standard textbooks and once you have a clear concept you can easily find out the direction of magnetic field produced due to a current carrying conductor. So your this, this is Bach's Howard law. Using Bach's Howard law, you can really calculate the magnetic field produced by a current carrying conductor in its surrounding space. Okay. Okay. Now, magnetic field produced by a finite length conducting wire. Okay. So, this is a conducting wire. And if you apply thumb rule, at this point, the coordinate axis are x, y, z, the current is flowing in this direction. That means elementary current, if I write, it is i, dl, i, dl, it is in the direction of z cap. Okay. Now, this is a problem you can say, the finite, we have learned just now, in infinite length current carrying conductor, how much? magnetic field is produced in the surrounding region. Now, the, consider the length is of finite size. Okay. Then what happens? Now, DL we can write like this. And this consider, this is the point, test point where the magnetic field has to be calculated. Okay. Now, drop a perpendicular from the test point on the conductor. This is this point you can consider as a origin of the coordinate system that is z equal to 0. Okay. This is the z direction. Okay. Now, this is z direction and this is y direction and x direction is obviously a direction perpendicular to the plane of the board and coming out of the board. Okay. Now, consider elementary length dz because this is z axis. So, dz elementary length x length on the wire, okay. And with respect to the elementary length current element dz, i dz, i dz is an infinitesimal current element on the wire. And because of this, what is the field produced at t? Let us calculate first. So, dv is actually is mu naught by 4 pi i by r square. This is r. This is the polar coordinate of this point with respect to dz is r. And this angle, this is angle between dl and dl vector and r vector is theta. So, it is dz sin theta. We are applying this formula mu naught by 4 pi i dl cross r cap by r square. Okay. Okay. So, this is mu naught by 4 pi i by r square dz by sin theta. Mu naught by 4 pi i by r square dl is dz in this case and angle between dl or dz and 
r vector is theta okay now <coughs> so this is db equal to mu not i by 4 pi dz sin theta by r square now this is z and this is elementary area dz elementary length dz so consider z by d z by d is what z by d this is z by d this is theta this is actually pi minus theta this is pi minus theta this angle okay so z by d is cot pi minus theta okay so cot pi minus theta is minus cos theta okay minus cot theta sorry because cot pi minus theta is cos pi minus theta divided by sin pi minus theta and cos pi minus theta if you recall cos curve this is pi this angle this is this point is pi so cos pi minus theta is negative of cos theta so it is negative of cos theta divided by sin theta okay so it is negative of cot theta so z by d is negative of cot theta z by b if it is negative of cot theta so z equal to negative b cot theta so dz is d cos square theta d theta with a negative sign so this negative goes so dz becomes d cos square theta d theta so what happens so db is actually mu not by 4 pi i dz sin theta this is the formula by r square r square is actually d square plus z square okay d square plus z square and with this substitution dz equal to d cos x square theta d theta so it is mu 0 by 4 pi i dz is actually d cos x square theta d theta d cos x square theta d theta multiplied by sin theta and d square plus z square d square plus z square is what z equal to negative of d cot theta so d square plus z square is what d square 1 plus cot square theta 1 plus cot square theta is 1 plus cos square theta by sin square theta it is d square cos x square theta okay so it is d square cos x square theta okay so it is mu naught i by 4 pi cos x square they get cancelled so sin theta d theta by d same calculation what we did earlier so mu naught i by 4 pi d sin theta d theta so db db is mu naught i by 4 pi d sin theta d theta okay now consider the length element pq and this angle is alpha and this angle is beta 
So total field produced by the length element PQ will be what? B equal to integration of this expression from limit theta equal to alpha to theta equal to beta. And this integration sin theta d theta integration sin theta d theta is minus cos theta minus cos theta alpha to beta. So it is basically mu naught i by 4 pi d cos alpha minus cos beta. Okay, so this is the expression of magnetic field at the point T because of the segment PQ of the current carrying conductor. Okay, so this is the expression for magnetic field. It is like this. Now we have already found this expression and at this point, at this point, the magnetic field will be into the plane of the board by thumb rule and from vector notation also because dl cross r, dl cross r, dl is in this direction, r is in this direction. So dl cross r is in, in, into the plane of the board and by thumb rule also it is into the plane of the board. So magnetic field will be into the plane of the board into the plane of the board and since into the plane of the board unit vector is negative x cap so the magnetic field at t we can write v equal to negative x cap mu naught i by 4 pi d cos alpha minus cos beta. Okay, so let us go to the next slide. So negative mu naught i by 4 pi d cos alpha minus cos beta x cap, it is the magnetic field. Now if you apply this formula for the case of infinitely long current carrying conductor, then what happens? This is the expression. Now for if the current carrying conductor is of infinite length, then alpha approaches 0. Because if you just being the point P infinitely downward, then alpha approaches 0 and beta approaches pi. Okay. And therefore, B becomes minus mu naught i by 4 pi d alpha cos alpha is cos 0 minus cos pi. So minus into x cap. So minus x cap negative of x cap mu naught i by 4 pi d 1 minus cos pi is negative 1 so so it is negative of x cap mu naught i into 2 by 4 pi d is actually negative of x cap mu naught i by 2 pi d okay so this is the same expression that we obtained earlier for infinitely long conducting wire, what will be the field here? And the field will be in the negative of x direction, that means into the plane of the board. Okay, so these are all simple applications of bios of law. You are, you are provided, you are given a current carrying conductor at any point in space because of the current carrying conductor, how much magnetic field will be produced, you can calculate applying bios of law. Okay, so these are, I think these expressions are clear. Okay, and direction of magnetic field, 
without vector convention you can apply thumb rule using thumb rule whatever this diagram you just follow using thumb rule you can calculate you can guess or you can estimate or you can find out the direction of magnetic field produced by a current carrying conductor at any point okay okay